and welcome once again to another instalment of my Source Vintage YouTube channel. This week, I'm going to tell you about something that dealers don't normally disclose. They're normally very forthcoming about their most fruitful purchases. They're not so forthcoming about their most disastrous ones. So that's exactly what I'm going to talk about in this video. I'm going to tell you about a few of my most disastrous, worst, embarrassing purchases. I suppose I'll start with one of my worst buys ever. I'm sure we've all been in this situation before. You're home alone, you're watching TV, you're scrolling through eBay, items end in soon. You're a few beers in, and then something catches your eye. You put a cheeky last minute bid in, you win it, you instantly regret it, and because you've had a few sherbets, you forget about it, until the next morning, that is, when your head clears. Well, this is what happened to me. What popped up but a 1950s shop till? Yeah, I thought it was a, a great idea. It was local, I thought, so I'm being sensible. The next morning, without a vehicle, just me and my trusted trainers, I set off hungover in search of my wonderful purchase. An hour later, I'm still walking, the soles of my trainers worn down to the depth of a piece of paper. And at this point, I'm heading out of town. Hangover sweats have started. Eventually, I reach my destination. I felt like my final destination, drenched in sweat. And this is when the seller brought out my item, or should I say, wheeled out my item. Goodness me, that's a big one, I thought. The seller asked whereabouts I was parked and if I needed some assistance in carrying the item to my vehicle. I said, no, absolutely not. I'm just around the corner. Don't you worry. I will take care of everything. So I handed over the money, lifted up the item, legs buckling under the severe weight of it, and off I struggled around the corner. And as soon as I was out of sight, the item went back down on the floor and I thought, this is ridiculous. What am I? I I'm in need of... A very, very good shortcut. And in this case, the only one available to me was across a secondary school field. So that's what I did. I picked up this item again and started staggering across this school field. Staggering across this school field with a shop till in my arms. Students, teachers staring out the window at me whilst I tried to walk as quickly as possible. It was like something out of a strongman competition. Apart from in this case, I really was no strong man. Just a sweaty, hungover, regretful man. Anyway, each metre I was edging closer to the centre of town, eventually reaching the stunning museum gardens in the centre of York. This is when more stairs started to happen. Photographs being taken. I had to rest because my, my legs and arms were, at this point, jelly. And thinking to myself, how bloody odd... This must have looked carrying a shop till almost like I would ripped it out of a working shop and just tried to do a runner. And I think this is what people were thinking. So anyway, exhausted and in need of some assistance, I phoned the antique centre that I had a cabinet in. And Catherine, bless her, and she will remember this story, came to help me and saw the mess that I was in. Crying with laughter, she lifted this piece up like it was a feather and carried it all the way back to the antique centre for me. And this is where it stayed for well over a year until somebody as stupid as me came in and bought it. And I'm sure they'd had a few drinks as well. But anyway, lessons learned. Don't drink and buy antiques. Learn from my mistakes if you haven't done it yourself. But like I said, I'm sure you have. Next up is probably one of my most in embarrassing purchases. I went to a car boot sale. An item caught my eye. Beautiful brass cylindrical shaped item with a pewter flappy lid and a mechanical handle to the front and a hose coming out of the front. And I asked the guy who was selling it, what can you tell me about this piece? He said absolutely nothing apart from it's French and it's Victorian. I was like, well, cool. I think is a beautiful piece. This piece is coming home with me. So I paid the man and headed home. And I thought, hey, up, this is... There's a few French restaurants and cafes in York. Fine establishments at that. They might be interested 
in this beautiful, exquisite, decorative French antique. So off I headed down to these places, putting the hard sail on when I got there, explaining that this would look beautiful on the dining tables as a decorative piece behind the bar. The people at each place that I visited were very confused and showed no interest in this exquisite French curio. They really had no taste, I thought. And so I headed home and started doing some research on this piece. And that is when I discovered what it actually was. It turned out to be a mechanical French douche for keeping you downstairs fresh. And it's Victorian, so it's probably freshened a fair number of downstairs, if you catch my drift. So, slightly embarrassed, and never stepping foot in any of these French cafes or restaurants ever again, I suppose if we learnt one thing, it's just, for God's sake, do your research before you try selling an item. Or, maybe even before you buy the item might be better. And finally, not only an awful buy, but probably my most heartbreaking buy. Somebody contacted me and said they had a few things that they needed to get rid of. So I went to their home. When I got there, they showed me to their garage. And their garage was filled with just your, your sort of average vintage homeware stuff. So nothing of interest really to me. But as I was leaving, I saw something very interesting lent up against the side of their skip. So on closer inspection, I saw that it was actually a very large antique tapestry. A beautiful scene of a family sat in a kitchen with the mother working on her sewing wheel. And I thought, bloody hell, Rodney. This time next year, trust your gut, Steve, go with this. This is going to be life-changing. So I said to the guy, I'll take this. And even though it was in the skip, he still demanded money for it. So I thought, well, I'll be retiring on this, so it really doesn't matter. Slipped him a little bit. Off I went with this enormous tapestry. Got home, dragged it through the front door, raced in and showed my wife and said, my dear, look at this life-changing piece. This is the piece that we've been waiting for. This time next year, we are going to be millionaires. So I photographed it, sent images to a number of different auction houses, waited a few days, and they all got back to me and said, it's a machine tapestry worth £25, £35 if you're very lucky. So yeah, I'd already started planning my retirement in my 20s, house hunting in the Bahamas. Told all my friends and family that I was going to be a millionaire. Um, but yeah, no, no such luck on this occasion. Um, so yeah, I think they call it trust in your gut and I know what I'd eaten that day, but my gut must have been in a right state. So that's it for this week, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this little insight into a dealer's worst ever purchases. I'm sure we've all made the same mistakes particularly after a few of the old sherbets. I'm, I'm sure you know what I mean. If you have made some funny mistakes, then please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. If you have already subscribed, thank you very much for your support. I really do appreciate it. Um, I also write a blog every Monday about interesting finds, the antiques, trade, funny stories, and the occasional interview with the celebrity antique dealer. So if this is your cup of tea, then head over to my website, source-vintage.co.uk. I'll put all the links below for you. And whilst you're there, you will see that I have my own shop where I sell lots of interesting items. I'm pleased to say that there are no shop tills. There are no tapestries. Um, there might be the odd douche here and there, me being the biggest one. But yeah, please head over, check it out. You might find something that you like. But until next week, thanks for watching again and see you soon.